Nvidia managed to recreate the whole Pac-Man game with an AI trained on the game itself, without any game engine and only using GANs. The best thing from this paper is that this Pac-Man game copy is even playable. This is a first in the field and here's how it's made. This is What's AI and I share artificial intelligence news every week. If you are new to the channel and want to stay up to date, please consider subscribing to not miss any further news. Nvidia recently published a paper called Learning to Simulate Dynamic Environments with GameGAN, where they visually imitated a Pac-Man game only by ingesting screenplay and keyboard actions during training. They made that happen without any underlying game engine. They called this model GameGAN. It leverages adversarial training to learn to simulate games. It is trained by observing screenplay along with users' actions and does not require access to the game's logic or engine itself. In fact, it does not even require a game engine at all. In this case, they train the neural networks on the Pac-Man episodes, a few million frames in total, paired with data on the keystrokes of an AI agent playing the game. The main difference with this new model is that GameGAN features a new memory module to ensure long-term consistency and is trained to separate static and dynamic elements. And yes, before you ask, what you are currently seeing was 100% made with neural networks with no game engine at all. To simplify the problem, they framed this as a 2D image generation problem. Given sequences of observed image frames and the corresponding actions the agent took, their goal was to emulate image creation as if it was rendered from a real dynamic environment that is reacting to the agent's actions. So GameGAN ingests screenplay and keyboard actions during training and aims to predict the next frame by conditioning on the action. In this Pac-Man example, an action will be a key pressed by the agent. GameGAN is composed of three main modules. At first, there is the Dynamics Engine, which enables GameGAN to learn how various aspects of an environment change with respect to the given user action. For instance, it needs to learn that certain actions are not possible, like walking through a wall, and how other objects behave as a consequence of the action. This primary component is able to learn such transitions by implementing it as an action-conditioned LSTM. The engine maintains the standard state variables for LSTM, HD and CT, which contain information about every aspect of the current environment at time t. Then, it computes the state variables given AT, ZT, MT-1 and XT to communicate with the other modules and itself, as you can see in this illustration. The next module is optionally applied for environments that require long-term consistency. For example, it's useful if you have an agent that needs to navigate through an environment. This environment shall not change when the agent comes back to the same location a few moments later. It's an external memory module which uses the neural Turing machine that allows their model to remember every scene it generates in the hidden state and design a loss that enforces such long-term consistency, which is a challenging task for typical models such as RNNs. This module has a memory block and the attended location at time t. As you can see in this picture, at all time, the model knows the current location that the agent is located at and the previous t-1 location as well as the action taken during this previous step to get to where it is currently. In short, this new memory module encourages the model to build an internal map of the environment, allowing the agent to return to previously visited locations with high visual consistency. The last module is a rendering engine. Theoretically, it can be simply implemented with standard transpose convolution layers. However, they decided to introduce a specialized rendering engine architecture for answering long-term consistency by learning to produce disentangled scenes. I will not dive deeper into the architecture of this module in this video, but I invite you to read their paper if you are interested in this part. Basically, it is responsible for rendering the next simulated image T plus 1, given a state at a certain time frame T, using a purposely designed decoder that learns to disentangle static and dynamic components within the image. This makes the behavior of the model more interpretable, and it further allows us to modify existing games by swapping out different components. To sum up everything, the model learns key rules of the game both simple and complex. Just like in the original game, 
Pac-Man can't walk through the maze walls. He eats up dots as he moves around, and when he consumes a power pellet, the ghosts turn blue and flee. When Pac-Man exits the maze from the one side, he is teleported to the opposite end. If he runs into a ghost, the screen flashes and the game ends. The Game Gun Edition relies on neural networks, instead of a traditional game engine, to generate Pac-Man's environment. The AI keeps track of the virtual world, remembering what's already been generated, to maintain visual consistency from frame to frame. No matter the game, the GAN can learn its rules simply by ingesting screen recordings and agent keystrokes from past gameplay. Since the model can disentangle the background from the moving character, it's possible to recast the game to take place in an outdoor edge maze, or swap out Pac-Man for your favorite character. Game developers could use this capability to experiment with new character ideas or game themes. Simulators are used to develop autonomous machines of all kinds, such as warehouse robots learning how to grasp and move an object around or even delivery robots that must navigate sidewalks to transport food or medicine. GameGAN introduces the possibility that the work of writing a simulator for tasks like these could one day be replaced by simply training a neural network. Suppose you install a camera on a car. It can record what the environment looks like or what the driver is doing like turning the steering wheel or hitting the accelerator. This data could then be used to train a deep learning model that can predict what will happen in the real world if a human driver, or an autonomous car, took an action like slamming the brakes. Of course, this was just a simple overview of the GameGAN network. I strongly recommend to read the paper and the interesting post on NVIDIA's blog, both linked in the description for more information. Leave a like if you went this far in the video. And since there are over 90% of you guys watching that are not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing to the channel to not miss any further news clearly explained.